What's going on, everybody? This is Brian Mazik. I'm a fight guy, a Forbes contributor, and I also write for Heavy.com. And we are powered by Fight TV and presented by Bet Online. Going over every single fight on the UFC Fight Night, Jessica I versus Cynthia Calvillo card. In the event that you are just watching this particular fight prediction, make sure you look at the end of the video. There will be a link for you to look at every single fight or every single video associated with this card. So without further ado, let's jump right into the breakdown. All right, let's talk about Jordan Griffin versus Derek Minner. This is this is a rematch, actually. These guys met back in 2018. And in that original fight, uh, Jordan Griffin got the victory uh, by uh, second round submission from an arm bar. Now, both of these guys are fantastic grapplers, right? Both guys come in with just you know, un, you know, just unquestionable resumes as far as grapplers. So sometimes when that happens, you see the fight end up being contested on the feet. Other times when it happens, you see it go right back to the ground. And, you know, we have this grappling contest because sometimes we say, okay, we're, well, the two, the two grapplers kind of cancel each other out. So now we're going to see who, who has the best stand up. Um, and Derek Minner, if you look at this, I mean, he has, he has, he's 24 and 11, been around for a long time. He's 30 years old, actually lost his last fight, which was his UFC debut. Uh, he had an opportunity uh, uh, on Dana White Tuesday night contender series back in eight, August of 2019 and was submitted in the first round by Herbert Burns. Now that might have sounded bad at the time, but now that we've seen two fights of Herbert Burns in the UFC, we know that's not a bad thing. I uh, was also submitted rear naked choke uh, at UFC Fight Night 169 back in February by Grant Dawson. So while, and then as I mentioned, he was submitted by Jordan Griffin. So while Derek Minner is a great grappler, a fantastic grappler, we also see that he's quite uh, susceptible to the submission loss as well. As a matter of fact, of his 11 losses, eight of them have come by submission. Jordan Griffin is uh, 18 and seven overall, five knockouts, nine submission victories. He's lost twice by submission, uh, but he got to the UFC uh, with a fantastic performance in July of 2018 on Dana White Tuesday night contender series, a first round submission victory over uh, Maurice Mitchell, but he promptly lost his first two fights in the UFC. Now that might have had people down on him at the time, right? Because he came out, he loses his first fight, now, you don't ever want to lose your first fight after the Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series. It just looks bad. It looks makes you look like you were a little bit overhyped, right? Even though that may not be the case. Then he loses his second fight, right? So that sounds bad, but now you got to circle back and see who he was fighting. He fought Dan Ige <laughs> in his first fight in the UFC. Now, at the time, that might have seemed like a, an appropriate matchup, but now that we see Dan Ige beating Edson Barbosa, and now he's ranked tells us a little bit something else then the second fight he loses to Chaz Skelly now if anybody knows about Chaz, Chaz Skelly's a tough dude with fantastic grappling he's got a weird build he's long in the arms wide in the shoulders tough fight for a uh, a fighter who's just getting to the UFC so but still that's a two-fight losing streak and Jordan Griffin needs a victory so he comes back in February of, t of 2020 which I believe was actually on the same card as Derek Minner it was uh, he comes out and he gets a, a technical submission, puts TJ Brown to sleep in the second round. So I think that now he has a little bit of momentum. And when you also consider that, you know, two years ago, you beat the guy that's in front of you now. Uh, I think if this fight does take place on the feet, I think that Jordan Griffin is a better, a better striker. I think he's a better athlete overall. If it goes to the ground, I think Jordan Griffin has far fewer holes in his submission game. I mean, Jordan Griffin hasn't been submitted in uh, almost six years. He was submitted by Dan Moret in October of 2014, which was very early in his career. And then he was submitted in the second fight of his career back in 2011 by Gary Bivens. So clearly... From a submission standpoint, when Jordan Griffin goes to the ground, he seems to be far more comfortable with Derek Benner. I mean, there's something to be said for beating a guy twice in a row, you know, uh, unless you're just 50 million times better than that guy. Um, but I got to believe that you, it's tough to go against Jordan Griffin in this fight. Bet Online has him as a minus 170 favorite. Derek Benner's plus 145. Based on their history, you know, personal head-to-head -head history and recent history, 
You might even suggest that maybe the odds should be even wider than that. But as they are, Jordan Griffin is the favorite. I got to go with that. I think he gets this victory. I'm not surprised if he submits him again. I'm not surprised if he pounds him out. I don't think this fight goes the distance. I think we're looking at a second round stoppage either way. Jordan Griffin is my pick to win in this one.